Hi guys, I'm Perry from Reddit and Right, and I'm talking to you today because you have ordered an amazing British artisan cheese mystery cheese box supplied by us at Reddit and Right. I'm live from our maturing rooms, which are really important, the maturing rooms, um, because they control the selective pressures in here. So I look after these rooms, we've got humidity, turning, brushing, washing, ironing, testing, tons of things going on to make sure the cheese is absolutely bang on for you guys. And I select five of these cheeses as a qualified appender, someone who refines cheese, and a well cheese judge, virtual cheese judge, artisan cheese judge, patron of the Academy of Cheese. So hopefully I'm more than qualified to select these cheeses for you and I won't let you down. So yeah, so in your box, you've got the five beautiful cheeses, We've got your tasting notes, if you don't want to listen to me. Everything's on there that you need to know. Oh, also, eat them in this order. Get your cheese out, they're all labelled up, and eat them in this order. I put them in this order so you can get the best out of each cheese, and they don't contradict each other too much. You've got your how you care for cheese, because if you don't need all these, we're quite generous with our fortunes, then, you know, you know how to look after them. You get some nice cheese paper in there, I put that somewhere as well, that you can rewrap your cheeses in, and your IA more brings cheese with that beautiful QR code on the back and you can let your friends know how amazing your cheese was and help them to buy cheese from us. That sounds a bit odd. <laughs> but anyway, we're moving to our first cheese. The first cheese up, we have the Mayfield, made down in Sussex by Arthur Also. Awesome cheese. So let's just inspect it. First thing to do, visually, let's take a look at it. Look at the interior that we have there. So the interior is yellow, cow's milk, right? And we've got these beautiful round holes that are emerging in the cheese. It's not mice, it's a bacteria that's aligned in the cheese. And as it breathes out, imagine, as it breathes out in a solid, semi-solid, you know, cheese state, it creates these saphirs, which actually look like holes. So dispel that rumor, you can pop that one in your trivia memory banks. And we've got this nice little covering of classico wax kind of rind, just to protect the cheese, keep the moisture in. Because what we can see, is a beautiful flying cheese. So this is what we're expecting from an alpine style cheese. So uh, yeah, so good break, good break on the cheese. Let's get into aroma. Light, bit of acidity there. Slight lacticness, a little bit of savory, which I wasn't expecting actually. Nice nuttiness, you know? What I wanted, nice and mild, ease us into the journey, which will be amazing, you know? That's what we're looking for. Let's give it a taste. Quite a big bit there. Great texture, dense, clammy, gets stuck around the gums, which is great. A little bit chewy, beautiful dairy milkiness, nice back note of savouriness actually, which I wasn't anticipating. A nice sweetness, acidity intermingled there, great clean finish, finishing in that dairy area, you know, that we're all familiar with. Coats the palate beautifully. Quite more, it's stronger than I anticipated, which, you know, is great, you know, why not, you know, um, so great to move us in there, and then nice caramels at the back, that sweetness, I was hoping that would come in, I was worried that it wasn't, but it's coming nicely, which is great. Next cheese we have up is Quix, Quix Mature Cheese, you know, so that's matured and made in Devon by Mary Quick, legendary cheese maker, legendary woman. I did a BBC Devonshire present with her the other day, actually, because uh, this cheese is quite special at the moment, because I've entered the Appener of the Year, first competition to be held in the UK. I received a Quix at three months old, and I'm gonna mature it for a further nine months, and enter with uh, all, the other, all the other Appeners in the UK to find out who's best. I mean, I'm not, you know, massively, like, com competitive, I'm kind of pushing the boundaries on maturing cheddar, so more temperature, slightly different humidity, some different techniques I'll be applying. So yeah, head over to our Instagram and search Appenar of the Year to find out about it. But it's a cheddar style, once again yellow, so we know cow's milk. You've got this waxy rind on the outside, that's an indication that it's a traditional cloth bound cheddar style cheese. You know, a little bit of mold that's developing on there that we're gonna expect from all fabulous artisan cheese. Aroma. See, now, where the first one's more milky, dairy, grassy, no, 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 it's not grassy, milky, dairy, with acidity and sweetness. This one is more uh, tang, familiar cheddar tang that you get. The, 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 the acidity is slightly lemony, actually, more, more towards citrus. 
And that's kind of a kind of as grassy on this Stephanie at the back here, which is good. Texture is pliant but crumbly in consideration to the previous one that we had. Flavour and texture. Mmm, great saltiness at the start actually. Nice familiar tang that's coming through, but very gently. Great butteriness actually. It's not like the typical cheddar where it's like pow, you know, right in the face, up front, you know, you're eating. It's far more delicate and gentle and complex with a nice kind of slight smoky edge, which is really unusual actually. Grassy, what you'd expect from Quicks. The buttery is higher. Really moorish. But that smoky note's really interesting. Great. Okay. Really nice cheese. Quicks, fantastic. I, I, once again, that's taking me by surprise. Next cheese up, we have a Bur Burkswell. Straight to this typical shape there has means it's been uh, made in like a colander type shape, a UFO shape there has. It's got these beautiful molds that develop on there. We've got chrysosporium going on, we've got penicillium, we've got a little bee linings on there. I love the rind on this cheese. It's quite thick on this one, draws in quite well. Let's have a look at the, uh, the colour. White. Sheep's milk. So, as I was saying, cows they don't absorb the colouring in grass. Sheep's cow, uh, goats do. They take on that so it doesn't pass on to their milk. So yeah, a really nice colour. Slightly more flaky, which is good. Still got that, uh, you know, quicks that's there. Still, still lingering. Aroma, oh, savoury, nutty. That's raw nut. You know, where this is refined sweetness. This is a really nice, gentle nuttiness. That. It smells beautiful. Flavour. Drier than we used to for the previous cheeses, which is a good thing. We've got some crystals that are happening there. Good bit of pepperiness around the tongue, which is great. That nuttiness is now coming through. Slight spiciness from the pepperiness that's coming in. Zing of, um, of lemon. Mmm. Beautiful. Well, guys, done a pretty good job here. I'm enjoying this. Next one up, highly unusual for our mystery cheese boxes. Thank you for Blackwoods for introducing to me to this amazing product. Essentially, it's Britain's artisan's feta. Why does an artisan cheese maker put feta on a cheese board? Because this is artisan feta, and it's good, and I wanted everyone to try it. I've been addicted to this stuff for the last three weeks since I've been introduced to it. Pop that in your fridge, you know, so it's mixing a rapeseed oil. That's where that, that aggressive orange is coming from, with thyme, bay, peppercorns, you name it, it's in there. But, you know, you're struggling for dinner. Pull that out, put it on whatever. Use the rapeseed oil and the, the lovely spices and blend they've got in there to, to marinate it. Um, use that in your salad. I mean, it's phenomenal. So let's pop this out. This one may be a little bit messy for your liking, guys, but... You know, I wanted to do something different. I mean, let's have a look at the actual thing. So, coated in rapeseed oil, let that drain off. Then that beautiful white starch. It's raw milk as well, actually, which is highly unusual for a, a Persian recipe, you know? Uh, a, a feta recipe. Um, aroma, garlicky, bay, thyme, all everything that's going on in there. It's fabulous. The exterior, I mean, I love cheeses like this because these are like almost curds that have been preserved in oil. This is like the building broke blocks, Nilefic times, first cheeses that were made, they would be something like this, you know? So aroma, we're maybe getting the oil and the, the, uh, the, the kind of the mixer that's in that. Let's go on and taste. Mm. I love this cheese. Salty, lemony, spices, thyme, bay, all that stuff coming through. Dissipates, moist, coats the palate, cleanses the palate, eradicates this previous memory of what we've had. That's why I talk about the cheese journey eating in this order. They're like little clouds of deliciousness. I mean, wow. Like, I'm so happy you guys are buying these boxes because. It's so good to experience stuff like this. I mean, it's such a great cheese. So simple, but just so simple, but all the elements of it are high quality and you can just tell the flavor. Mm. 
not to do that all day. Blackwood's cheese, grace burp. Persian recipe, better, phenomenal. I hope you guys enjoy that. I know it's a bit left of field, but I really hope you enjoy that. I kind of based the board around that cheese because I just wanted you guys to experience it. Next cheese up, uh, blue. Always have a blue. Bovau, made by Cropwell Bishop in Nottinghamshire. British answer to Gorgon's Zola. Love this cheese. So we've had the soft with this, with the, the, the black woods, but not oozy soft, you know? So I wanted to give you something that was a little bit more, you know, kind of aggressive, you know, on the on using. Good peppering of blue that's consistent through there. We've got breakdown going on. This is like a dolce. Like, I mean, look at that. You know, it's, it's pretty cold in the caves at the moment, in maturing rooms. Well, you know, I'm having some troubles with humidity, the high weather that we've had. So I've had to chill it down a little bit to keep it more consistent. Um, but yeah, I mean, once this is on your board, it's got to run off. I mean, smell, dairy, hot, digestive. Pretty much every time what I say about blue that's there. Bit of salty meatiness that's there. Let's give this flavor a bit. Really great. The peak quantity is high. For a creamy cheese, it really takes you by surprise, that peak quantity. It's almost like an acidity that has a pepperiness there as well. The cream in oil and then the saltiness comes in the back. That saltiness, which is like a meat saltiness, like uh, roast chicken skins kind of thing. You know, when you fill that off your freshly roast chicken and hope your other arm doesn't notice that all the skin from the chicken's gone. Maybe that's just me. Delicious. Great. Well, guys, I'm so happy with these five cheeses. I, I think they're a really great board. It's my birthday month as well, so I'll be tasting these cheeses a lot because um, I love cheese and what better way to celebrate your birthday than, than, than five amazing cheeses. I hope you guys enjoyed the Grace Bird. My favourite? I'm going to go Grace Bird. You know, purely because it's just so different and just so well executed. I think that's the final point. So well executed. But it's tough. I mean, that Burks was amazing. That Bow Val was just phenomenal. Amazing cheeses, um, guys. You know, thanks for all your support again. Really appreciate it. You know, we're coming out of lockdown. More people are going to restaurants. We're supplying more cheeses to our restaurants. These maturing rooms are looking more empty than they were in lockdown, which is amazing because it means that maybe we just save, like, together and everyone else. Come on you know, the British artisan cheese industry. So thank you so much for your support. Really appreciate it. Any questions, guys, look us up and give us a call. We love speaking to you. Have a great weekend or, or, or month of June and uh, enjoy it. Speak soon.